Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Roll Spot Country with another summit of Building the Team. So last week's team was our thousand point Battle of the Titans team with uh, the Horseman keyword. And um, yeah, it kind of got hosed. Bad. Hulk is a, huge, is a giant target. <clears throat> Literally, he has the giant symbol after all. Um, and Apocalypse is also a pretty big target too. But uh, so this upcoming week, though, we're trying something. We're going something a little. We're going a bit smaller. Uh, at least this upcoming week, possibly also the following weeks. But um, 300 point modern. So I started looking at some of my more recent acquisitions. I thought, hey, what can I build for, uh, with 300 points? So first off, we got ourselves a monster team. I mean, it's technically a codex team, but the reason I'm, saying, I'm calling it monster rather than codex. And it's kind of the basis for, something, for another idea I've got in mind, which I will be referring to largely as the Codex Men. Though it's incomplete, as um, I'm at least lacking Venom Wolverine from Empire. Anyway, let's take a look at this team. First off, we've got Venom Iceman. I really like the way this guy looks. Like, seriously. So, Venom Iceman comes in at 65 points. He has the Defenders and X-Men team abilities, as well as the Champions, Codex, Defenders, X-Factor, X-Men, and Monster Keywords, and Improved Movement ignores Characters. We've got two traits. First off is Symbiotic Fusion, Plasticity, Super Senses. If Venom Iceman is within four squares in line of fire of an, oppo of, of an opposing character, he can't be targeted by, by range attacks. Okay, all right. Kind of harkens back to the, uh, kind of makes me think in some ways of the Dark Knights, the, one of the traits that the uh, Dark Knights had in uh, DC Rebirth. Similar, but still very different. Next up is Alien Ice Wall. Barrier. Barrier is free, but only to generate one marker. Opposing characters adjacent to one or more of Venom Iceman's barrier markers must roll for breakaway if they don't already have to. Okay, all right. So looking at his dial, we've got some running shot followed by sidestep on speed. On attack, we have a special power, Ice Ball Blast, which grants incapacitate and knockback. When Venom Iceman destroys a square of blocking terrain, after resolutions, deal one damage to each opposing character adjacent to that square. Okay, all right. We, then we get some late dial poison. Uh, we get some invulnerability followed by toughness, and then on damage, we get some late dial and power. Okay, all right, that's kind of cool. So after you've been hit a while, you kind of just want to have him hang back a bit and just pump up everybody else, pump, beat the crap out of, our, out of everybody. All right, moving on to our next figure, though, we've got Venom Cyclops. Personally, not the sculpt I would have gone with. I probably would have gone with uh, the sculpt design based off of how uh, Venom looked uh, under Null's under, well, under Null's control during uh, King and Black, but that's me. It was, much, it was more, much more visually striking, in my opinion, but hey, whatever. Anyway, Venom Cyclops comes in at 70 points. He has the X-Men team ability, as well as the Codex, X-Men, and Monster Keywords, and improved targeting adjacency. Uh, he can make range attacks out of adjacency, including to make range attacks against adjacent opposing characters. We have the Symbiotic Fusion trait, same as uh, Venom Iceman. Looking at his dial, we get a click of running shot, followed by some tech levels of sidestep, then another click of running shot, two more tests of clicks of sidestep. On attack, we have a special power, everything changing, which grants knockback. Then on defense, we've got a click of initial deflection, followed by a couple clicks of toughness, and then another click of initial deflection, and another couple clicks of toughness. Sadly, no range combat expert, no penetrant psychic blast, no energy explosion. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of bland, actually. But it's what I need point wise, so yeah. Next up, we've got Venom Rogue. Venom Rogue here has actually already had a little bit of a rat up because of uh, the wording of one of her traits. But uh, yeah, she comes in at 75 points. She has the Brotherhood and X Men keywords as well as the Brotherhood of Mutants, Codex, X Men, and Monster keywords. We have the Symbiotic Fusion trait like Venom Cyclops and uh, uh, Venom Iceman. And we've got I can remember everyone I've ever touched. When Venom Rogue hits, give a hit character an absorption token. As a free action, use a display power that an adjacent character or a character with an absorption token can use. 
this has been changed to say, to say displayed standard power. Um, Venom Row can use that power until you choose again. Okay. <clears throat> then looking at her dial, we get a couple clicks of charge, then a couple clicks of size, then a couple more clicks of charge. On attack, we open up with nothing, but that gives way to a special power, Alien Earthquake, which grants Quake and Steel Energy. The Steel Energy works like she as follows. She heals one click for each hit opposing character damaged by her by the attack. When Venom Rogue attacks, she deals penetrating damage, and she's got two targets. So up close, she can attack two characters. On defense, we've got four clicks of invulnerability, a couple, followed by a couple clicks of toughness. Damage, we open up with a click of exploit weakness, and then the rest is in power. Okay, all right. Next up, rounding out the team proper, we've got Venom Doctor Strange. Venom Doctor Strange comes in at 90 points. He has the Defenders and Mystic's team ability. Yeah. As well as the Avengers, Codex, Defenders, Midnight Suns, Monster, and Mystical Keywords, and Improved Targeting by Made Range Attacks have Adjacency. We have two traits. First off is Summon Help from the Venomverse. When Venom Doctor Strange hits an opposing character, if no character has been placed this turn after resolutions, you may roll a d6. On a 3 through a 6, choose a character from your sideline whose name includes Venom of equal or less points to place adjacent. This game, that character can be carried, replaced, or be replaced, and returns to your sideline at the beginning of your next turn. Okay. Uh, he also has the trait Symbiote, which grants plus and shape change. Shape change has been benched, so that's why our Codex men don't have it. Looking at uh, Dr. Venom Doc Strange's dial, we get a click of running shot, followed by a couple clicks of, of sidestep on speed, followed by a click of running shot, then a couple more clicks of, of sidestep. We've got five clicks of penetrating psychic blast on attack, followed by a click of pulse wave. Defense, we open up with a click of super senses, then we get a couple clicks of uh, initial deflection, back to super senses, back to ESD, and then we wrap, wrap up defense with a click of regeneration. On damage, we open up with a special power. It was my decision to bring you all here, which grants leadership and probability control. We get two clicks of that and a click about wit. Back to the special power, then two more clicks about wit. Okay. All right. So, now we mentioned the sideline a couple times. Well, there are two figures in particular we're putting on our sideline. First off, for um, the purposes of summoning help from the Venomverse, we've got Venom, the Prime from Absolute Carnage. Uh, Venom comes in at 80 points. He's got the Spider-Man ally team ability, as well as improved movement in the elevated terrain. He also has the Codex Maximum Carnage, Sinister Syndicate, Spider-Man Family, Monster and Reporter Keywords, and the trait Symbiote Codex Hunter, which transposes assist in shape change. When he KOs an opposing character after resolutions, you may heal one click. If that character had the Codex keyword, heal three clicks instead. Okay. So looking at his dial. On speed, we open, open up a special power driven mad by null which trans charge, but you do not need, but he does not have his speed. When Venom uses it after resolutions, deal one penetrating damage each adjacent character, friendly and opposing. Then we get some regular charge followed by some regular flurry. On attack, we get a couple clicks of blades and a few clicks of quake, and then some a couple clicks late dial of steel energy. On defense, we open up the click of invulnerability, but we get uh, four clicks of toughness and a click of the special defense power. The symbiote is taking over, it's a, which is a stop click, which it grants toughness. As a free action, roll a d6. On a 1, give Venom an action token. 2 to 5, choose 1 to last through your next turn. Regeneration, or impervious or regeneration. 6, heal 2 clicks. Then we get some late dial, mid to late dial, uh, close combat expert. Okay. The other figure on our uh, sideline will be Deadpool. And on his 40 point line. So Deadpool, like I said, he's on his 40 point line. He has the team player wildcard team ability, as well as the Deadpool core, assassin, monster, and ruler keywords. We get two traits. First off, to be honest, this is overdue. Or this is way overdue. Sideline active. When a friendly character of 75 points or more with the monster keyword is KO'd, after resolutions you may replace you may generate Deadpool on his red starting line from your sideline in that character's square. Okay. So when either Venom Rogue or Venom Reckless Strange is KO'd, Deadpool goes in their place. 
Next up, we have Murr Free, once per game, a Jeff Bystander. The Jeff Bystander has Charge, Blade Slaw's Fangs, Toughness, and Exploit Weakness, and a Trait. Gross, but awesome. When Jeff is KO'd by an opposing attack, for the rest of the game, Deadpool can use Flurry and Steel Energy and may heal pass his starting click. Okay, so let's take a look at Venom's Dial. So, first off, we're starting at on the fourth click. So we got a click of Charge, followed by three clicks of Sidestep, four clicks of Blade Slaw's Fangs, a click of Toughness, followed by three clicks of Regeneration, and then four clicks of Leadership. But, if Jeff is KO'd, we get more Blades, more Toughness, more Leadership, and more Charge. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Next up, we have ourselves an X-Men team. So, there have there been some new X-Men figures out of uh, Empire, and I thought, hey, why not see what I can build with them, right? So, to get things off, we've got... This is not, however, a conventional X-Men team character-wise. First off, we've got Scarlet Witch. The Pretender turned Redeemer herself. So Scarlet Witch comes in at 50 points. She has the Avengers and Mystics team abilities, as well as the Avengers, Brother of Mutants, X-Men, Detective, and Mystical Keywords. We also have a, she also has improved movement, or improved targeting, hindering terrain, and she has the Rally ability, uh, keying off of friendly attack rolls for auto, that include a 1. When an opposing character would, within range or, and line of fire makes, it, makes an attack, you may remove Scarlet Witch's Rally die and replace a die in the attack roll with it. So you can basically, let's say your opponent needs a 7 to hit, they roll a 6 and a 1. Well, you can pull the 1 off. The, if you've already got a 1 on here, or a die on here, you can pull that 1 off and it turns into a critical miss. Which also, I believe, when replacement happens, that means that, uh, you're, that the, dot, the die roll is finalized. Anyway, looking at her dial, we have a couple of clicks of, si of facing teleport followed by a few clicks of sidestep. On attack, we open up with a click of telekinesis, and we have a couple of clicks of uh, penetrating psychic blast followed by a couple of clicks of steel energy. Defense, we have a f three clicks of energy deflection followed by two clicks of uh, steel of uh, uh, super senses. Damage, we open up with a special power, which is sight, which grants outwit and probability control. Okay, followed by a couple of clicks of regular probability control. Not too shabby for 50 points. She is unique, so you can only use one of her on a team, but yeah, still, not bad, not bad. Next up, we've got Jubilee. I like the sculpt, and I kind of like the dial, honestly. So Jubilee has the X-Men team ability, as well as the Excal or, yeah, Excalibur Generation X, X-Men, and Mystical Keywords. She also has the X-Men team, and she comes in at 75 points. She also has a Rally ability, keying off of opposing attack rolls, including a 5. Free. Remove Jubilee's Rally die. If you do, she can use probability, con probability Control until your next turn. Okay. Some backup prob for uh, Wanda. Looking at uh, Jubilee's dial, we've got five clicks of Running Shot, followed by two clicks of Sidestep. Two clicks of the Special Attack Power, Disorienting Blast, which grants Incapacitate when she uses it to give it action tokens. After resolutions, hit characters can't use team abilities until your next turn. Okay. Then we get some mid-dial energy explosion, a couple more clicks of disorienting blast. Defense-wise, we open up with defend for three clicks, and then we get some late-dial combat reflexes. Then on damage, we open up with a couple clicks of leadership, followed by a few clicks of enhancement. Okay. She'll actually be fairly useful then. Next up, we have Relind. Relind is a remake of Super Scroll X-Men from the old Secret Invasion set. So in Secret Invasion, um, one of the things the Scrolls did was they uh, combined powers to make Chimera Super Scrolls, basically. They had, there was an Avengers one, there was a New Warriors one, there was, um, there was an X-Men. Actually, I think there were a few X-Men ones, which had different versions, which incorporated different power sets, basically. So, Relind, however, comes in at 75 points. He has the X-Men and Skrulls team ability, as well as the Skrulls, X-Men, Spy, and Warrior keywords. We also have two traits. First off, Engineer to replace the X-Men. Sideline active, unique modifier, friendly captains, he's an ally. 
Uh, this is a Captain and Psychic one. It doesn't really matter for this, but um, friendly Captain and Psychics modify attack plus one when attacking one or more characters with the X Men keyword. Okay. Next trait: Powers of the X Men. Free. Choose two powers from the following list. Merlin can use those powers until your next until you choose again. Facing teleport, running shot, charge, blaze toss face, penetrating second blast, energy explosion, energy shield deflection, super senses, and regeneration. Wow. Okay. Now looking at his dial, we've got a full run of size up, full run of toughness, three clicks of shape change, which will work great with that scrolls team ability, and then four clicks of close combat expert. Okay. Um. All right. Now comes the figure I really wanted to test out for this team. This is Wolverine from the Play at Home Kit. We'll be playing this Wolverine at, 100 po at, a, at the full 100 points. He has the X-Men, Avengers, and Fantastic Four team abilities, as well as the Avengers, Fantastic Four, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, Shield, Weapon X, Exports, and X-Men keywords. We also have a trait. That's what happens when you scuffle with the old Knucklehead. At the beginning of your turn, heal Wolverine one click and roll a D6. On a fourth row six, Heal one click for each distinct printed team ability shared by Wolverine and all adjacent friendly characters. Hmm. Oh, so this isn't going to go work as well as I hoped it would. Hmm. Oh well. We got some possibilities, but yeah. So anyway, looking at Wolverine's dial, though, we open up with one click of a special power. You fight me, you're gonna get hurt. End of story, which grants charge flurry and stealth. We then get two clicks of regular charge. Back to the special power, two more clicks of charge. Back to the special power, regular charge. Full run of blade claws, fangs. Defense. We have two clicks of toughness followed by a click of uh, super senses. Then we get. Two toughness, one super senses, two toughness, one super senses. Damage wise, we open up with two exploit followed by close combat expert, two exploit followed by close combat expert, two exploit followed follow by close combat expert. Okay. See, I, I, I miss, I, I misremembered how the trait went, but oh well. Maybe it'll still work out. It could still work out decently, right? Anyway, our last team is a shield team and also features everyone's favorite uh, short. Short ball of hairy rage. But first off, we've got Dazzler. Dazzler here comes in at 35 points, has the Shield and X-Men team abilities, as well as the Excalibur, Exiles, Mojoverse, Shield, X-Factor, X-Men, and Celebrity keywords, and improved targeting ignores hindering terrain. We also have a trait, Dazzler, Special Mutant Liaison. During Force Destruction, choose up to two friendly characters that share a keyword with Dazzler and choose either Shield or X-Men. Chosen characters can use the chosen team ability this game. Well, we'll probably be choosing War Machine and Human Torch. Looking at her dial, though, it's short. Hey, she's 35 points. We get a couple clicks of running shuffle, back a couple of side step on speed. On attack, we have a special. Uh, yeah, on attack, we have a special power, Blinding Flash. When Dazzler hits with a range attack. Choose one to last until your next turn. A hit target can't use uh, improved targeting abilities, or a hit target modifies range minus three. We have four clicks, a full run of initial deflection. Then on damage, we have a couple clicks of enhancement starting at the top. Okay, all right. Next up, we've got the Human Torch. Now this is not Johnny Storm, this is Jim Hammond, the Golden Age Human Torch. So, Human Torch here comes in at 45 points. He has the Shield team ability as well as the Invaders, Shield, Past, Police, and Robot keywords and improved movement and ignores characters. He also has the Follow Up trait. Free. Once per turn for all characters with the Follow Up trait, make an attack using Human Torch's printed combat values, but only to target a single character hit with an attack made by another friendly character with the Shield keyword. Okay, alright. Looking at his dial. We open up with a click of running shot, followed by a couple clicks of sidestep, then another click of running shot, another click of sidestep. We've got a 
top and close to late dial click of Penetrate and Psychic Blast. On defense, we have an opening click of Energy of Deflection and the rest is Toughness. Then on damage, we have a special power for the entire dial. Motivational Leader, which grants Enhancement and Leadership. Okay. All right. That'll play into uh, our plans, that's for sure. Next up, we've got Wolverine. Wolverine here comes in at 50 points. He has the Shield Team Ability, as well as the Shield X-Men and Spy keywords. We've got three traits. First off, tracking the target. At the beginning of the game, choose an opposing character as Wolverine's mark. Whenever that character moves, after resolutions, you may move Wolverine up to two squares. If Wolverine's mark is KO, choose a different opposing character to be, the, to be a new mark. Next up is Silently Stalking. Wolverine can't be targeted until he has made an attack that this game or is adjacent to his mark. Finally, we have I Heal, do you? When Wolverine hits, after resolutions, he may use Regeneration as free. Ooh, I like that. Looking at his dial, we've got three clicks of sidestep, followed by, or three clicks of charge, followed by three clicks of flurry, the full run of blades, claws, fangs, uh, three clicks of toughness, followed by three clicks of combat reflexes. On damage, we have three clicks of explode weakness, followed by three clicks of empower. Okay, all right. Next up, we've got wasp. Wasp comes in at 60 points. She's a captain. She has the Avengers and Shield team abilities, as well as the Avengers, Shield, Wakanda, Scientists, and Spy keywords, and she has improved movement and ignores characters. We also have a trait. Remember your training. Free. Choose a friendly psychic. That friendly psychic has shield this turn. Not really going to matter on this team, though. Looking at her dial, we get four clicks of running shot, followed by four clicks of sidestep. On attack, we have four clicks of penetrated psychic blast, followed by four clicks of energy explosion. Defense, we open up with nothing, which, but we then get four clicks of Super Senses. Then on damage, we, we've we got four clicks top, starting off of Leadership. Okay. All right. Our last figure for the team is War Machine. War Machine here comes in at 100 points. He has the Avengers and Shield team abilities, as well as the Avengers, Initiative, Shield, Stark Industries, Armor, Soldier, Warrior, Keywords, and Improved Targeting, Ignores Hindering Terrain, and may make range attacks out of adjacency. We also have two, we have two traits, Assembled Avengers. Once per turn, when War Machine hits, after resolutions, you may roll a d6. On a 5 or a 6, or 4, it's 3 or more friendly characters of the Avengers keyword. Remove an action token from War Machine, or give it an action token to hit target. If you're forced a 6 or more, do both. Next up is Minigun Target Lock. When War Machine hits, after resolutions, you may give a hit target a target lock token. Then remove all other target lock tokens. Free. Make a range attack using War Machine's printed attack and range damage values, but only target the character with his target lock token. Okay, all right. Now, to be fair, that's not that might not uh, matter too terribly much uh, with what's what I got planned. So, but you know, we never, we never know. Looking at his dial, we get a couple of running shots and a couple of of sidestep and a couple of of earthbound neutralized. On attack, we open up with a couple clicks of Penetrate Psychic Blast, and we end with a couple clicks of uh, Precision Strike. On defense, we open up with a couple clicks of Invincible, then we get a couple clicks of Impervious, a couple clicks of Invulnerability. On damage, we open up with three clicks of Special Power, Variable Threat Response, which has Perplex, but only to target himself, which then gives way to three clicks of Ranged Combat Expert. Okay, alright. Now we got one other thing going on this team. The Time Gem. Costs 10 points, modifies range by plus 1, and grants the equipped character probability control. When the character attacks, if the attack roll is 10 or higher, opposing hitters can't use effects to re-roll attacks this turn. And we're, I'm kind of leaning, I'm actually kind of leaning towards putting it on a war machine, to be perfectly honest. Up his range by 1, plus, as I recall, yeah, um, if he's, because he'll likely be carrying Human Torch for that enhancement, so... He'll have an effective range of 9. Plus he'll have probs, so... In the event that... Uh, hey, hey, if you roll a 10 or higher, well, no more re-rolling for you. But the idea would be War Machine... 
War Machine uh, hits someone good um, it, while carrying Human Torch. The enhancement ups the damage to 5 penetrating. Then Human Torch uh, follows up and ho hopefully KOs the character. Anyway, that's going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.